MCCLA. Welcome to the live broadcast of Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. Worship this morning. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Blessed assurance.
invite the maker of light to shine down upon us this morning, the creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is within it, to be present with us, to awaken us, to aliven us, to revive us, to renew us, to increase our vibrancy and our relevancy to this world and to this community. We praise you, God, that you are not a God that just sits around and waits, but rather comes and be present with us this morning and invites us to abundance, to abundance in life, abundance in all that we do, abundance in all that we are and all that we are yet becoming. Because God is not finished with any one of us. God is still talking, still present. So we ask ourselves, God, how are we gonna receive you this morning unless we are open to the experience of God with us? So help us as we come in off the street this morning into this sacred space to open ourselves, to awaken ourselves, to be very present this morning so that in that presence we might seek your presence both within and without, within ourselves and within those around us. Maker of light, shine down on us this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. Please be seated. It is, as always, an absolute joy and a delight to welcome you to worship this morning as we gather on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's a joy and a delight to welcome you, not only on the lower level this morning, but up in the balcony this morning. It's a joy and a delight to welcome every single person who's worshiping with us live on the internet this morning. We know that we have people from around the world that are joining with us this morning, and so we welcome you specifically this morning, wherever you are. I'm going to look to the right camera. Wherever you are in the world this morning, we want to welcome Welcome you. It is a joy to welcome. Let's welcome all of our internet viewers this morning. We also want to welcome you if you are worshiping with us for the very first time this morning. We know that you have a choice in worshiping communities, but we are delighted that you're present with us. I wonder if you would indulge my spirit if indeed you're with us for the very first time today. I wonder if you would just raise your hand and keep it up for a moment so that we can see you, so that we can welcome you to worship this morning. It really is a joy to welcome you into God's house. Please accept this flower and a brochure as our way of acknowledging your presence amongst us. Inside the brochure, you'll find more information about our church. You'll also find a welcome card that's designed specifically for you this morning. We invite you to complete that card. It does ask for some personal information, how we may be able to follow up with you this morning. Um, those cards uh, can be put into the offering plates uh, later on in our service, and those cards will come directly to me. My name is Reverend Dr. Neil Thomas. I'm the senior pastor of our congregation. Uh, but along with every single person that surrounds you in this space this morning, we truly believe in the priesthood of all believers that every single one of us is called with our names and with a purpose, that every single one of us is worthy in God's name of ministry. So we want to welcome you into this household of God this morning. You'll see that the ushers have already passed out the, uh, the welcome tablet, so please do sign in for us. Let us know that you've been present. Uh, also important for us to know how we may be able to minister for and toward you. So if you would like a member of the staff to give you a call this week, uh, please do check that box, and we'll make sure that one of us follows up this week. Of course, if you're in need of emergency pastoral care this morning, we don't want any one of you to leave without knowing that you are loved and cared for. So please do feel free to speak to any one of us uh, that serves on the dais this morning. Um, and we'll be very glad to spend a few moments with you after worship and then to take some time with you uh, as a follow-up later on in the week. As you came in, the ushers would have given you your orders of worship, and inside are the announcements for today and for the upcoming weeks. Uh, we are an extremely busy church, and uh, it's really important that you take your orders of worship with you. Uh, not everything that we announce from the pulpit is in your order of worship, so it really is important because if we took all the time that it took to just make the announcements for today, there'd be no time left for the sermon. And I know that you want to get to the sermon as quickly as possible, so we're going to move ourselves right along this morning. There are some announcements for you, and so if you would just bear with me as I just let you know what those are. Uh, you know, on a Sunday morning, it's really exciting to watch the courtyard and how busy it's becoming out there as people are gathering and as the 9 o'clock folk are leaving and the 11 o'clock folk are arriving. And, of course, Mount Hollywood's congregation are also gathering in the chapel uh, on a Sunday morning. But, you know, one of the things that really heartens me is to see how many children there are present in our congregation. 
And uh, our kids club is, 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 is growing and expanding. Uh, nine o'clock service, we had a brand new family that joined with us this morning. And uh, it's just wonderful to watch how that's happening. So kids club are looking for some volunteers. If you are an assistant or you'd like to help teach our young kids um, on a Sunday morning, uh, please do let us know. Uh, you'll be receiving training and uh, about how that happens for us. Uh, but please see Reverend Dr. Pat or Dean Kofi this morning. Uh, they'll be in the courtyard directly after worship. July is our annual backpack drive, and we take the opportunity to collect backpacks and uh, uh, all those school supplies in the backpacks so that we can distribute them to underprivileged children. Uh, please help us to bring dignity into the lives of children and youth in need. Uh, we partner with many organizations, domestic, partner, uh, domestic violence projects, um, and other projects where kids are underprivileged. And we know what it's, how important it is to go back to school with a new backpack, just like every other child does. Um, so in July, we'll be collecting backpacks and uh, things to go in those backpacks. It's a drive that's been sponsored by the tribe, our young adults group, and uh, we're going to invite you to bring those in throughout the whole month of July so that we can get those uh, to uh, those children in need uh, before they go back to school after the summer recess. So please do start bringing those in from next week. People of African descent are meeting today. They'll be meeting in the uh, school building, which is just off the courtyard. Um, and they'll be meeting at around about 12.30 if they can get me wrapped up by then. Um, but they'll be meeting in the, in the school building just next to the courtyard. Tonight is uh, Faith and Family Night um, at the Staples Center where the Sparks are playing. Yes, basketball tonight, uh, sponsored by the women's group. I know Britain lost tennis this morning, so I'm in a little bit of mourning. But perhaps we can just relieve that with basketball this evening. Uh, it's a basketball and a gospel concert. Can you believe that those two things exist in the same place at the same time? I just have this wonderful vision of them dribbling the ball down. I think that's what they do, or they throw it from one to the other. <laughs> you know, singing, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So... Um, <laughs> Faith and Family Night, if you would like to go, tickets are still available. They're $18, and uh, they will be in the courtyard directly after worship. I know that there is one ticket going available uh, that's already been paid for, and uh, Crystal, uh, she'll be in the fellowship room after worship, and if you would like to go, uh, please do see her directly after worship this morning. If you're new to our church and of uh, uh, thinking about becoming a member of our congregation, uh, members and inquirers classes are on Saturday, uh, July 14th from 10 until 12.30. Uh, Bonnie Dosty, who is our uh, membership and inquirers coordinator, just does a great job. Good looking woman right over there. She'll be meeting in the Gandhi room, uh, which is behind the sanctuary. Now, I know that you know, we're all starting to get used to where the layout of everything is in the building. But in order to make it better and easier for you, we have now put up a color-coordinated, fabulous map in the courtyard, uh, which tells you which room is which and why we've called it those names for the time being. Uh, so if you're lost, uh, there's a little map. It says, you are here and uh, then gives you directions to the rooms around. So please do take a look at that uh, directly after worship if you're not sure where the Gandhi room is or the Ryland room or the kids club or the school building or any of those buildings, uh, please do take a look after worship. Roger Owens is going to uh, successfully... He might successfully take us down to San Diego and back again for uh, the annual San Diego Pride bus trip. Um, as you know, most of us get so involved in Pride here in Los Angeles that it's hard to actually just appreciate a Pride festival. Uh, I just got back from Toronto and uh, it was their annual Pride festival and it was just wonderful to be able to just uh, sat on the side of the road and wave at folks and take pictures and all those sorts of things. Uh, so that's coming up on uh, July 21st. We'll be leaving West Hollywood at 8 o'clock in the morning and hopefully getting you back all in one piece at about 10 o'clock in the evening. Our tickets are $25, and if you would like to go, uh, please do see Roger Owens. He'll be in the courtyard following worship. He was the one that applauded himself over in the choir, um, and he'll be delighted to, to uh, take you down. Yes, give him a round of applause.
the tribe, our young adults group, are bringing the picnic inside, and that is on Sunday, July the 22nd. If you're under 30-ish, <laughs> I'm not sure what ish means, but if you're under 30-ish, uh, join the tribe for our summer get-together. Uh, it will be in the Ryland Room, and it's sponsored by our young adults group, and they will be more than pleased to see you um, on July 22nd as we continue to make relevant this congregation in so many different ways. As I said, there are so many other things. Take a moment, just open your brochure and just see what's inside there. You can just see it's jammed pack of uh, small groups and ministry groups and social groups and ways in which we make a difference in the world. And that's just today. So please do take a moment to avail yourself and to familiarize yourself with how you can make a difference because we've been called together as the body of Christ. We can do so much more when we are together than when we are just on our own. God is good. And all the time. And so we turn to one another now and offer that goodness to one another as we share faith this morning. God bless you. You're in the right place. Sisters and brothers, our scripture reading for this morning is John 10, verses 7 to 15. Jesus told this simple story, but they had no idea what he was talking about. So he tried again, I'll be explicit. I'll be explicit then. I am the gate for the sheep. All those others are up to no good. Sheep stealers, every one of them. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Anyone who goes through me will be cared for, will freely go in and out and find pasture. A thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. I came so that I can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd puts the sheep before himself, sacrifices himself if necessary. A hired person is not a real shepherd. The sheep mean nothing to them. They see a wolf come and run for it, leaving the sheep to be ravaged and scattered by the wolf. They are only in for the money. The sheep don't matter. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep, and my own sheep know me. In the same way God knows me and I know God, I put the sheep before myself, sacrificing myself if necessary. You need to know what I have. You need to know that I have other sheep in addition to those in this pen. I need to gather and bring them too. They'll also recognize my voice. Then it will be one flock with one shepherd. This is why God loves me, because I freely lay down my life, and so I am free to take it up again. No one takes it from me. I lay it down, I lay down my life, my own free will. I have the right to lay it down. I also have the right to take it up again. I received this authority personally from God. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen.
it's uh, not too cold out there, not too hot. Uh, we have installed personal air conditioning units for every single person. <laughs> so if you're in need of a fan this morning, um, either use your, uh, your brochure or um, uh, use the fans that have been uh, specially designed and printed for us. Uh, air conditioning is part of phase two of the building renovations, and uh, our hope is that that will begin as soon as possible. But um, personal air conditioning units have been installed for every single human being. If you need one, uh, please just raise your hand and we'll make sure that the ushers see you, recognize you, and they'll get one to you. And just remember, as you're fanning out that way, a little bit of that comes this way, and so it is a blessing and a, uh, just a joy. Let's come together and ask God to bless this moment in worship. Let us pray. God, we're so thankful that you have called us into this sheep pen this morning. You've called us to be your people this morning. That you've called us by our names this morning. That we've been able to acknowledge and to know that name. And even if we don't fully understand what that means, we're still here. And that's just good enough. We're thankful, God, that in that you open us and Awaken our spirit this morning, so that in that awakening and in that spirit that is yours, we find truth, a truth that speaks to us, a truth that is relevant, a truth that is authentic, a truth that is not just something based in a sacred text written thousands of years ago, but a truth that is written in the sacred text of our own lives. So we offer ourselves this morning fully and openly and as we have prayed and as we have sung and as we have prepared for this moment, now, God, we ask that you would keep us still. Help us to be open channels to that grace and to that truth. And so this morning, God, I pray that you would now touch my lips of clay, that you would mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, the risen and living Christ. Amen. Amen. So this morning I begin a new sermon series that will take us through the next few weeks uh, entitled Keys to Abundance. And over the next few weeks what I want to look at is what are these things about abundance and what does abundance mean for us in our world? How do we enable abundance to become a part of the very fabric of our bodies and how do we allow that abundance to change not only who we are, but change the world in which we see ourselves. What is abundance and why do the church always seem to be talking about abundance? Why can't we just live in the status quo of life or the status quo as I prefer to call it? Why can't we just stay in that place without having to always feel as if we're having to grow or to change or to be on the cutting edge or to be an inclusive or progressive or radically inclusive or add new initials to the names that we find ourselves? Why is it that we can't just stay still instead of having to be in this place of abundance, this place of growth and change and nurture? I truly believe that the church has done us a great disservice around this sense of abundance. Uh, that the church so often has talked about abundance in its theology of prosperity, and I'm going to be talking about that in just a couple of weeks, but I just want to start off by reminding ourselves that abundance is not about financial abundance. You know, I think we went through that in the uh, 90s and the early 2000s where prosperity preaching was the, the, the order of the day. That, that in order for you to know that you were being blessed and that God was present with you, you would have financial resources out of the wahoozle. That there would be no shortage of financial resources in your life. And the one way in which many people measured abundance or measured how much God loved them was through how much God had given to them financially. And of course, now we live in a recession. And many of us are struggling financially. Many of us are struggling through many different kinds of loss in our lives. And so it begs the question that when God is not blessing you through those financial resources, through that abundance, then does that mean that somehow we've upset God? That somehow God is not happy with us? And that somehow we are not being blessed purely based on the financial resources that are available to us. Now, I'm going to address that in just a few weeks, so don't let me go down that track this morning. But why abundance? You see, I think that reality is that abundance is not based on financial resources. I don't think abundance is based on anything that is material in our own lives. I think that God's abundance is based on the way in which we view ourselves, 
the way in which we see ourselves, the way in which we come to life with that sense of gratitude and with that sense of thanksgiving, and that abundance is demonstrated by the way in which we are willing to divest ourselves, to be of service, to sacrifice ourselves, if you will, in order that the greater good might be made manifest in the world. The scripture reading reminded us that we have been called into a sheep pen. Now, again, I struggle with scripture sometimes because I don't like the analogy of being a sheep. Now, I'm told sheep don't have brains. Now, I don't agree with that necessarily. But, you know, when you look at sheep in a, in a field, it, it does seem like that everyone just has to follow and be the same. You know, indeed, indeed if you, if I've been around farming a little bit in my childhood, not much as an adult, but, but I know that the, the sheep keeper wants to mark their sheep in such a way that they know who they belong to. And, and whilst I believe that God definitely marks us so that we know who we belong to, the mark that God gives us is a mark of diversity and of inclusion, and the mark is beyond just that we have to be homogenous or that we all have to think the same or do the same or be the same. We don't just follow the sheepkeeper without having some element of brain connection. Although I have to say in many of our churches, in many of our theologies, we ask people to leave our brains at the door rather than bring them into the sanctuary because somehow we have to go into blind faith rather than a faith that is actually dependent on our thinking and on our relationship with the God who loves us most. So why abundance? Why do we have to come to this place of abundance? Why do we have to come to this place to acknowledge that there is abundance in our lives? And how do we do that, not just in a recession world, but how do we do that in a world where it does seem that everyone is at odds with one another? It does seem that we're in different camps, left and right, and sometimes in the middle, but that we are no longer called to that place of being in unity one with the other. You see, I think that we clearly demonstrate what abundance is and that the key to abundance is not about the circumstances of our lives. You know, we realize that our lives have their ups and their downs. We realize that our lives have their good times and their not so good times. We know that our lives are a continuum and yet the abundance that God offers to us and the key to abundance is the attitude with which we come into life itself. That place of gratitude, that place of thanksgiving, that place of knowing that regardless of our circumstances, there is something in our lives that is the bedrock and the foundation of who we are. That we have been invited into a sheep pen this morning that is one that fills us with that sense of blessedness, that blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Not to the degree that it says that Jesus, therefore, doesn't belong to anybody else, but the blessed assurance that Jesus is mine, that, that I'm good with God just as I am. And that in that blessed assurance, in that knowledge that I have been invited into the sheep pen, that, that invitation is extended to us, not so that we keep it to ourselves, but that that is given to us so that we have something to share with one another. That sense of abundance, that sense of life, no matter where it is on that continuum, and we may be in really bad space this morning, or we may be in really good space this morning. And I say to every single one of you, regardless of the space that you are in, I want to thank God that you found your way here this morning, because this is a place of abundance. There's, there's enough of a good God to go around in this place this morning. No matter where you are on that continuum. You know, even as pastor, you know, I think sometimes we all think that, you know, if you're a pastor, then everything must be rosy and green and wonderful in the garden. And those of you who have been around ministry for a long time know that that's just not the truth. You know, sometimes even pastors go through crises. That sometimes pastors even go through the bad times in our lives and know it's not confession time this morning. I'm not about to tell you what's going on in my life. You know, unless you really want to know. <laughs> then I really got a sermon for you this morning. <laughs> but even in those times of desperation, even in those times of loneliness, even in those times of a feeling that where is life going? The one thing that I have found that coming to life from a place of abundance... Abundance of God's grace. 
an abundance that God shows up in the very small places of life. That somehow God finds a way through the crisis to help us through to the other side. And sometimes that's through the very person that sat next to you this morning. But in that abundance, there is thanksgiving and there is gratitude. And if coming to life from that place of gratitude and thanksgiving helps us to understand the vastness of who God is, then we have found abundance. Abundance in joy. Abundance in hope. Abundance that goes beyond the way in which the world views abundance. Abundance that helps us to to muddle through this life, to get our way through. You see, I think sometimes we think that we have to put on this veneer in our lives of everything is wonderful, and the truth is that not everything is wonderful. But the great thing is that God calls us not to do this on our own. And God doesn't say that we only have to do it with God in our lives. God says that we get to do it because we're part of a sheep pen. We've come into a house of God this morning of people who even if we don't know the person sat next to us, even if we don't know, if we've been the very first time in this church this morning, that we've been welcomed into a place of people who want to live from a place of abundance and not from a place of scarcity. Because if you live from a place of scarcity, you just want to keep everything to yourself. But if you come to life from a place of abundance, that there will always be enough. Enough for you, enough for me. And I'm not talking about money, but enough for you and enough for me. Then it doesn't trouble us to give some of it away, to share some of it, to be present in God's house with some of it, and to allow it to become a part of the way in which we live, in the good and the not so good. You know, Florence Charney's on the front row this morning, and um, I want to say it's great to see him back this morning. And there are several of us who have been in hospital recently. Laura's back, and it's just great to see the way in which God moves. But the reason why I pointed to Florenciani this morning is because I know that when he first went into hospital and first acknowledged that he needed to get into hospital, and there's, there's God's grace of abundance for you right there and then. But as soon as the church knew that he was in hospital and that he needed help, I want to tell you his room at the hospital was like a revolving door. I've never, never seen so many people go to visit one single person in a hospital. Um, thankfully, he knew how to reach out into the world because sometimes when we are not well, we want to isolate. But thank God he knew how to reach out. His fingers still knew how to text those of us who got his text messages. A wonderful way of doing ministry these days. You used to have to do you know, clouds up into the sky so that people could read them and see where you are. But now it's text messaging. <laughs> You know, or checking in on Facebook. I love that, checking in on Facebook. He knew how to get some abundance in his life, even when it felt like his life may be coming to an end. You see, that's the abundance that God invites us into. To acknowledge that many of us have gone through those periods of isolation, to know that many of us have been through those places of denial, that many of us have been through those places where we just want to self-destruct because of what the world throws at us. But God comes to us this morning and says, that's not what it's about. I need to get you into a sheep pen. I need to get you into a community. I need to get you into a church. I need to get you into Metropolitan Community Church of Los Angeles, which is a vibrant, inclusive, and progressive church. I need to get you here this morning. And in this vibrant, inclusive, and progressive community, in this church of VIPs, In this place this morning, do you like that? (laughs) We're VIPs this morning, vibrant, inclusive, and progressive. It's our new tagline, amen? (laughs) I'm going to tell you, there there are many progressive churches that are dead. I don't want this to be one of them. I want us to be vibrant as well as inclusive and progressive. Why should the evangelicals just get the vibrant churches? It's about time we did, amen? Vibrant, inclusive, and progressive, VIP churches. I know that when we get ourselves into this sheep pen, we can find the place of abundance. 
We can find the place that we no longer need to be isolated. We find the place where God's grace abounds, not because we are towed a party line, not because we have fit into a stereotype of someone else, but because we have become authentically who we are. You see, I truly believe that the key to abundance, the first key to abundance, is living from a place of authenticity, living from a place of gratitude, and living from a place of thanksgiving, that God should bother enough about us that God would create a place in which we can come and be. And if we can come to life from that place, if we can come to life from that first key to abundance, I truly believe life changes. I truly believe that our whole attitude changes. And suddenly when things come along that confront us or confound us or perhaps we think that somehow God isn't blessing us because we don't have the financial resources and we heard the prosperity preachers or, or we're told that if you're sick then, then God must be punishing you. When we get to those places, we understand that God actually just opens up her arms just a little bit wider and welcomes us into the sheep pen. And says, friends, why are you trying to do this on your own? Why are you trying to do this in isolation? Come and be a part of this key to abundance that begins with a change of mind, a change of attitude, and a living life from a place of a community rather than from a place of being on our own. I know that we are stronger together. We are stronger together. And before I close this sermon this morning, I want you to hear the other part of this scripture. For I know that there are people who are not of this sheep pen, and I must go and find them. You see, the key to abundance is knowing that there are still others who need what we have. Not to mark them with the same mark, but they need this abundance. They need this community. They need what we have to share with one another. And so our job as community when we grow up and we become this community is not just to keep it to ourselves and make us the best kept secret in Los Angeles. Our job is to go into the world, wherever that world is, the leather bar, the gym, the hospital, the place where perhaps others won't be seen, the spa, the women's group, Weight Watchers, Nutrisystem. <laughs> Love Nutrisystem. <laughs> Wherever it is that we find ourselves, <laughs> The Philippines. You know, Jane, our music director, is in the Philippines with Camille right now and is just doing incredible work with our Filipino and our, our congregations out there. We want to really appreciate them this morning. <laughs> Certainly think differently than we do here in North America, but still part of who we are. Help us to go, therefore, into all the world the places that perhaps others aren't ready to go to because their theology doesn't allow them to and offer to the world this vibrant, inclusive, progressive community of faith that is willing to dare to live in the boldness of abundance, knowing that we have yet so much more to share. May that be true not just for this church, or for this world, but for each of us individually, because we deserve it, because God ordained for it to happen. Let's live, therefore, from abundance and not from scarcity, knowing that whatever's going on in our lives, the God who creates us is there for us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. 
God, once again, we are surprised in the way in which you continue to show up because I know that this service is designed for at least one of us. There's at least one of us in this room this morning that got something and will get something from the rest of this service. And if that's true, then this has all been worth it. So help us, therefore, God, to think about our part in this. Where do we fit? Where is our abundance? What is it we're keeping back? And what is it that we need to let go of and to share? Help us to think about living from a place of gratitude and from thanksgiving. And help us to allow that to color, to, to make real you in the world. So as those now who have been called on this pilgrimage, on this journey together, those who are in this room together today, those who will come next week, those who are, have been here before, help us to reach out again and to find that key to abundance in our own lives. Help us not be afraid, but to let go and to let God. Blessings and honor, therefore, may the words that have come from my mouth not return to you, God, without having some change in this world. To the honor and glory of the one who creates, redeems, and continues to be present with us, Jesus. Amen. As we call for the offering this morning, we definitely are VIPs within this congregation, and we are definitely provided with abundance of ministries that we offer, not only to this congregation, but to many who serve and work and worship and have meetings on this campus. And it's your gifts that help make these ministries happen. Whether the abundance is large, whether it's small, it's your abundance that makes the ministries happen. So please give as you can this morning and let us pray as we call the offering. Dear Lord, thank you for the abundance that you have given each and every one of us this morning. Not only whether it's large, whether it's small, but we are the VIPs here in your congregation. And as we give this morning, let us give to whatever abundance you have shared to give. May we be blessed, and may the offering be blessed as well. Amen.
thinking about the sheep. Mm. You know, I, the other parts about sheep, the, why it might have been the symbology that Jesus used, because sheep were used to sacrifice, and Jesus himself was the last sacrifice. Yes. So I see Jesus bringing together those who are willing to sacrifice themselves to follow. And today I believe we too are called to sacrifice. Sometimes it's sacrificing our time. Sometimes it's sacrificing our heart to give. Sometimes it's sacrificing our egos to receive. And so with that in mind, I invite us to go to God in prayer, one with the other. Beloved community, we are called indeed to be cared for by the Good Shepherd, to allow ourselves to be cared for by the Good Shepherd. We, the sheep, not the ignorant, but the wise, I hope, are being called into prayer, being called by the voice of that good shepherd to hear our prayers. And so, united as community, we weave our hearts and our minds together allowing ourselves to sacrifice, to give up our concerns, to lay them at the altar, for those who have felt depleted in the journey. I pray that we can allow ourselves to rest with our shepherd to be renewed, to be fed, to be nourished, to be nurtured, to be brought back into wholeness, so that indeed we might not just follow, but serve fully and completely. So if there are any of us right now who are feeling depleted, my prayer is that we go to the living water and drink in abundance, to feast on the presence of God in abundance. For those who are full, I pray that we allow ourselves to sacrifice a little bit right now, to share some of that joy, to share some of that wisdom, to share some of the gifts that we have been given so that others might not thirst so that others might feel comfort. So we bring our joys into this area to the Good Shepherd, to bring our joys so that together we can all be fed. We can lift one another up and we can celebrate <laughs> one with the other. So I ask God to be with each and every one of us as we come to this table, prepared to receive and to give fully of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. On the night you were betrayed, you took the bread. After giving thanks, you broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. And as you eat it, remember me. This, this is, is my body, broken for you. And as you eat it, remember me. On the 
night you were betrayed, you took the cup. After giving thanks, you lifted it up. This is my life's blood poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. This is my life's blood poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember. And so we thank you for the bread and for the wine. And we thank you for your love, which was yours and now it's mine. And we remember your wondrous love. body you shed your blood for each and every one of us and so I ask blessings upon these gifts the sacrifice given freely so that each of us might live might we receive may we remember and claim our holiness and sacredness and be fed by this meal that you gave to us I ask this in the name of Jesus amen Friends, here at Metropolitan Community Church of Los Angeles and at Metropolitan Community Churches around the world, we serve and celebrate an open communion. By this we mean that you do not have to be a member of this church or indeed of any other Christian organization in order to come and receive of communion this morning. Yes. If you choose to come forward, you'll receive a wafer which has been dipped in non-alcoholic grape juice, It'll be placed upon your tongue or you may take and dip and serve yourself and the server will offer you a short prayer of blessing. It's a time when you can come alone with loved ones, friends, family, husbands, wives, significant other, significant others. Come knowing that this is your table, not ours. It's a table that's been given and created by the one who loves us most. And so come knowing that you are welcome. There is nothing that separates you from this table nothing. You may have been told there was. You may have been told that unless you were baptized and confirmed you couldn't receive communion. You may have been told a number of things. But we understand that that is dogma and not the values of Jesus who invites us just as we are. So come knowing this table is set for you. And if you choose this morning not to come and receive from a server because perhaps you just aren't ready to have that interaction with another human being this morning, then there'll be a station of consecrated elements to my left, to your right, on the small altar that you can go to at any time and just take a wafer, dip in grape juice, and serve yourself just between you and God. But whether you decide to come forward or just remain in your seat, know that this is a time to commune to be at one with, as Reverend Pat always says, to be one with the God who loves you most. Yes. So we're gonna ask the acolytes and the servers to come and to prepare the table. And all we ask, because there are some rules in this church, all that we ask is that you follow the direction of the ushers who will get you down, through, and back without too much hassle this morning. 
So acolyte servers, come and join me. And ushers, if you would guide us to communion this morning.
life is offered through this meal. Yes. Our abundant life is offered through the way in which we share with one another. Mm. And our abundant life is knowing that even when we feel like there is nothing left to give, the God of our understanding comes alongside us and helps us to remember that we no longer need to live from a place of scarcity, but from a place of abundance. Not financially, not as the world may see it, mm -hmm. but from the very depth of our spirituality yes. that enables to make it real. So let's close our worship this morning as we rise in body and spirit and sing and share with one another. doubt will know that we have been revived <laughs> when we shall leave this place. And now unto God's gracious mercy and protection each and every one of us is given. And the blessing of God, known as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Shalom. Shalom. Peace. Peace. Namaste. Namaste. Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Asalaam. Amen.
you for joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people you've just seen in this broadcast, not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews, we are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? Interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You are